Wait for it. Daddy. Well, son, since you haven't learned to respect your elders, it's time you learn to respect your betters. Oh, there he goes. Duke throwing his own son into the mud. His real life son. And wait for it. Wait for the epic speech. Duke gave epic speeches when he needed to. Give you leave. Yep. Maureen O'Hara, beautiful. You're going with me. I hope you can use that hog leg better than you can fight. Does that suit you, Daddy? You can call me Father. You can call me Jacob. You can call me Jake. You can call me a dirty son of a bitch. But if you ever call me Daddy again, I'll finish this fight. Yep, that's how awesome John Wayne is. Hi, I'm Emily Graziano, and this is going to be a video that I am doing my top 10 picks of my favorite John Wayne films. Yes, everyone, what is up? This is Emily Graziano, and I know most of you mo know me as a major Kiss fan, but maybe what you also didn't know about me is I'm a major classic movie geek, and I really wanted to start talking about films. I don't know if you guys would be into that or dig that, but I think one person, one actor that I could start with that maybe a lot of KISS fans would dig is John Wayne. And before I go any further with this, I would like to dedicate this video to my late grandfather, Joseph A. Casper. That's Casper for K. Uh, John Wayne was his favorite actor, and I know if he were here, he would be right beside me talking about John Wayne because he just loved John Wayne. I'd also like to give a quick shout out to my Uncle Alan, my cousin Michael, um, to my pal Teresa and her family. You know who you are. Um, and I just wanted to talk about my 10 of my favorite John Wayne films. And I know that's not enough. John Wayne had such a vast career that even 10 is not enough to it's just not enough. I feel like I'm missing. So if I don't mention your favorite, don't be offended. Please don't because truly, I probably love the movie. I just didn't. I did this in a hurry. I grabbed 10 films. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna go with it. So again, this is gonna be totally random what I pick up from what I picked up from my shelf. So it's gonna be even a surprise to me to talk about it. And I hope maybe you know these films, maybe you don't, but we're just gonna have fun with it. So one of my favorite films that I picked up from my shelf, She Wore a Yellow Ribbon. The, from 1949, directed by John Ford, the second movie in the Cavalry Trilogy, the unplanned Cavalry Trilogy that John Wayne did with Ford, and I can't say anything bad about this. I love this movie. John Wayne, he's really an actor in this film, and I know a lot of people say that John Wayne should have been nominated for this rather than Sands of Iwo Jima, which came out the same year, because he played in a person far beyond his age. He wore a um, smaller hairpiece and acted older, and he, he just did a phenomenal job. If you don't believe John Wayne can be an actor, this is the movie to watch. It's just so delightful, and I can't say one bad thing about it. It has like Ward Bond and um, well right here, Ben Johnson, Harry Carey Jr., just all these wonderful character actors. If you haven't seen it, watch it. This was one of my grandfather's favorite films, so it had to be on this list. She wore a yellow. The second film that I is in this that is on this list that I is in the stack. It's literally like in the stack that I picked up. The Searchers, I know it's way too easy to have this on a list, but I had to. I, I just had to. The Searchers, what can I say? It is the peak of what John Ford and John Wayne did. It's... Sorry, I had to pause it, but yeah, what can I say? The Searchers, the peak of what Ford and Wayne did. And I got to see this on the big screen when I met Lana Wood, the S Natalie Wood's sister. I took a picture of her, she signed, she signed this. Lana Wood, she played young Debbie right before she got kidnapped. She gracious, graciously signed that along with a picture on my wall. Um, 
it was just amazing. I will never forget that. I begged my dad to take me, and he took the day off work to take me, so The Searchers has a special place in my heart. I'm not going to say too much about it, because perhaps I can do another video about it, but, I mean, if you haven't seen it, it's an essential. That's all. That's all I'm going to say. I, I don't feel unqualified to talk about a film of this stature, because I don't want to screw it up, but I'll just say Searchers, definitely see it. Next up is True Grit. Duke won the Oscar, and he damn well deserved it. I mean, who... Well, I'm gonna quote my Uncle Alan, but he's like, you haven't seen the new one, have you? And I'm like, no, and he's like, good, the new one sucks. And I have to agree with what you're saying here, Uncle Alan. This is just a delightful film. Who cares if John Wayne is in his later career? He was still awesome. Um, I know some people have problems with maybe Kim Darby's acting, but who cares? John Wayne is the star. Kim Darby really lets John Wayne have it. She has those snappy comebacks, and it's just wonderful. And Glenn Campbell is in this, and for Kiss... Wait, no. There's a slight Kiss connection here because in the sequel, Rooster Cogburn, made in 1975, this is 1969, in 1975 they did a sequel called Rooster Cogburn with Anthony Zervi in it as the bad guy. So there is a slight kiss connection to True Grit. But True Grit, I, um, I bought a poster when I was at the John Wayne Birth Birthplace Museum and um, yeah, what can I say? It's an essential. So True Grit. Next up on my list we have Red River. Again, it proves John Wayne is an actor. What can I say? He plays kind of a mean character, kind of in the same vein as the Searchers, I guess, where you don't like him, but you do like him. It, I, I mean, come on, we got Howard Hawks as director. He has that famous, famous Red River belt buckle. I can't say anything bad about it. I, I'm just so nervous talking about it right now in front of you. So Red River, if you haven't seen it, 1948, also starring Montgomery Clift as kind of like John Wayne's adopted son, so gotta see that. Next, we have Stagecoach, the film that brought Wayne and Ford back together, because um, in 1930, John Wayne did The Big Trail, and that was his first movie as John Wayne, but Raul, Raul Walsh directed that film, and Ford was apparently so ticked off that he didn't get to direct John Wayne in his big, like, non-bit part role, and didn't work with him until Stagecoach. They kept in contact, but that was kind of Ford's way of putting him in his place, I suppose. Um, they... Oh, how can I put this? Yeah. John Wayne, that's why he did all those B pictures throughout the 30s, because John Ford was so ticked off at him. He, even when they were preparing to do this role, Ford showed him the script, and he's like, well, who do you see in the lead role as Ringo Kidd? And John Wayne just said off the cuff, uh, some other actor. I, he said a name, but I, it, I just eludes me right now. And he's like, what? No! F Ford went off and he's like what no you big sob it's you you're you're the one who's going to be in the role so stagecoach i mean the stunts in stagecoach with uh it was actually a stunt man yakima come up jumping off the stagecoach from that is not done today and this was no trickery this is a i'm putting my life on the line for this stunt and if the timing is off, if I jump wrong, if the horses are misplaced wrong, I could die. So that, amazing. I mean, this is from 1939, Hollywood's Golden Year. If you haven't seen it, watch it. It's incredible. It, and I know there can be some dated elements, especially when it comes to the Native Americans, but you can't let that stop you from watching it. Just the camera and the lighting and the acting and the turning the stereotypes on its head. I, I just can't recommend it enough. I could talk five hours about all these films basically, but I'm not going to. So stage codes, definitely watch that. Next one, a personal favorite. It was in the clip snippet at the beginning. Big Jake. Big Jake is basically a family affair for John Wayne. 
his son Michael produced it, his son Patrick is in it, and little Ethan Wayne, he plays the grandson who gets kidnapped. Maureen O'Hara is in it, although sadly some of her scenes got cut, according to her autobiography. A lot of her scenes ended up on the cutting room floor to save time. That is so sad because I wish we could have seen that, and sadly deleted scenes when they got thrown out, they got thrown out. It's not like today. Big Jake, if you didn't know, John Wayne basically like 95% directed this film because um, it is credited to veteran director George Sherman, but he was quite ill during the production of this film. John Wayne basically directed a majority of it, but he didn't take credit because he didn't want to smear George Kennedy, George Sherman, sorry, George Sherman's name. That's just the type of person John Wayne was. It's a personal favorite of mine, and although it does get criticism because some people say, oh, it's kind of like a searcher's ripoff with, you know, finding the kid, and, um, like, Maureen O'Hara doesn't really have a big part, and I don't like Patrick Wayne's acting, I don't care. I love this film, and I will forever love this film. Big Jake from 1971. Personal favorite. I think personal favorites sometimes more powerful than the critically acclaimed favorites because it's the fan favorites that really get a lot of noise from like hardcore fans so big jake a lot of you probably already know that i love the quiet man but i brought it up here anyway what can i say it's so romantic i'm kind of ruined for romance after watching this film because it's like who wouldn't want a whirlwind romance and fun fact if you didn't know the scene at the beginning, well not the beginning, but when Sean and Mary-Kate meet in his house and the, the famous wind scene, Maureen O'Hara, when she went up to John Wayne to smack him for kissing her, she broke her wrist during that scene. And you can tell that she, like you can hear it snap if you've really listened to it. And the backstory is John Wayne and her were arguing before the film. And she wanted to get back at him by smacking him in the face for the scene because it would fit the scene. Mary-Kate is mad at Sean. And Duke knew what was up and he put his hand in front to stop her. And she just carried on like the real trooper she was. It's incredible. Maybe you didn't know that. And also, fun fact, if you didn't know, the races scene on the beach when Maureen O'Hara is sitting in the cart, she is sitting with John Wayne's kids from his first marriage. She's sitting with Patrick, Michael, Melinda and oh shoot Patrick Michael Melinda and is it oh Tony Tony his daughter Antonia but they called her Tony so she's sitting with them maybe you'll look out for that but quiet man I could do a whole video on this truly quiet man favorite and also another Maureen O'Hara movie I it's so unfair I put like three Maureen O'Hara movies in this but I don't care. Rio Grande from 1950. Fun fact, Ford didn't really want to make this movie. He only made this movie so he could make The Quiet Man. The chief of the studios, Herbert J. Yates, said, well, I'll make The Quiet Man, but it's not going to make any money. What did he know about picture making? I don't know. Um, so we'll do a western so it'll recoup the loss. Well, guess what? Both this film and The Quiet Man blew up at the box office and uh, Herbert J. Yates, the studio, got rich. Anyway, this movie, I although it is considered not top tier John Ford, it is still so good. Like, John Ford didn't even care about the direction of this film. He, he was very distracted, wanted to make The Quiet Man. He used first takes on a lot of the scenes, but it's like you watch it back today and you're like, whoa! This is incredible. Like, the scenes with, and, it, and again, the cast, Harry Carey Jr., Claude Jarman Jr., um, Ward Bond, Victor McLaughlin. I mean, incredible cast. You can't go wrong. The, this is the third installment of the Cavalry trilogy. And fun fact, John Wayne also plays a Kirby York, the same character he played in Fort Apache, but in this film he added an E to the end to make it a little bit different. So that's fun. I can't say anything bad about this. And that was that was eight films. And I didn't want to dig in my mom's stuff for the 
other films that I wanted to mention, but I have to mention honor um, the last two films that I wanted to include on this top ten list. I wanted to include The Sons of Katie Elder. I freaking love this film. Dean Martin with The Sons, The Four Sons of Katie Elder. I know a lot of people don't like this film or criticize it for saying, oh, if Katie Elder had four sons from that age, she'd have to be like... She'd have to have the first son at like 15 and then she'd have to die when she's like way, way too old to have the sons. It doesn't make sense mathematically. Who cares? It's a movie. The brothers have a good camaraderie. Who cares? I love this film. It's so good. And fun fact, if you watch the river scene and you put your ear up real close to the speaker where, they, where the boys drag John Wayne into the river, you can hear a little boy calling out, Dad, Dad. And that's little Ethan Wayne standing off the side, worried for his dad because this was the first movie John Wayne did back from his cancer bout when they removed his lung. They had to pull John Wayne out and he got a cold before he got really, really sick. Um, so, and I did it myself. I looked like an idiot with my ear up to the speaker, but it's true. You can really hear Ethan Wayne calling out to his dad. It's, that's incredible that it stayed in the finished film. But yeah, that's number nine. And number ten in here that I wanted to talk about. Oh, duh. <laughs> Bear with me. I have to talk about The Shootist. I know it's way too easy. It's his last film. But I have to include it on this list. Only John Wayne could go out like that. Only John Wayne. It doesn't get better than that. He gave a phenomenal performance and it wasn't even planned as his last film. I can't even say anything more about it. I'm getting a little bit emotional here. But yeah, top 10 John Wayne films for this moment anyway. I could talk about way more. If I didn't mention your favorite film, I'm so sorry. There are so many more I wanted to include. Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. The horse soldiers. The horse soldiers. Bill Holden. My guy, Bill Holden. It's Bill Holden's birthday today. Happy birthday, Bill Holden. Um, I mean, I, I wanted to also give a shout out to, like, so many more films that just didn't make it. They were Expendable, Angel and the Bad Man, Fort Apache, Three Godfathers, Sands of Iwo Jima, Twine Leathernecks. Hondo, oh my god, Hondo, I love Hondo. Island in the Sky, one of my grandfather's favorites. Island in the Sky. Wings of Eagles, that proves he can act. If you've never seen it, the scene where he's like, I'm going to move that toe, and the scene where he learns to walk again, oh my god, phenomenal. Okay, I'm going to stop talking and ranting about John Wayne. Those are top ten picks for me as of this moment. I thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, I will do more John Wayne in the future. You guys, thank you all for the support, and I will see you next time.